Moving on from the Strait of Gibraltar, now we will be marking the Swiss Canal. The Swiss Canal is in the northeast. This Swiss Canal is 162 kilometers long and it stretches along the Isthmus of Swiss and it separates Africa from Asia. I will explain again. It says that the Swiss Canal connects the Mediterranean Sea and the Red Sea. You can see this line connecting both the seas, the Mediterranean Sea and the Red Sea. The Swiss Canal is connecting them. Secondly, uh, this canal was sorry, this canal was constructed across the isthmus of Swiss which previously connected Asia and Africa. So when we are talking about the Swiss Canal and Isthmus of Swiss, we need to know the meaning of these two words very clearly. What is a canal? A canal is an artificial waterway constructed to allow the passage of boats or ships into the land or to allow the water for irrigation. We had uh, come across this term when we were doing our Egyptian civilization and uh, you had learnt about the canals being constructed by the civilization. And the next term that we used was isthmus. Now this also we have done in class 6. Uh, let's understand the definition first. An isthmus is an elongated narrow piece of land with water on each side that joins two large land masses. Now in class 6 when we did the isthmus of Panama that is what was joining the North America and South America. It was an elongated narrow piece of land with water on each side and when we did that map of North America and South America we understood that it was um, joining North America and South America and water on the either sides was the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. Here when we are talking about here when we are talking about the Swiss Canal which is constructed across the Isthmus of Swiss. The Isthmus of Swiss here is connecting Asia and Africa and the water bodies on the either side is the Mediterranean Sea and the Red Sea. So I hope we are all clear about the term Isthmus and the word Canal. I hope everybody has clearly marked the Swiss Canal along with me. Now moving on to the next important water body in our map is the Gulf of Guinea. Now, the Gulf of Guinea is very important to mark in our maps because of its location. As uh, it li lies the country of Ghana. I'll repeat. As along the shores of Gulf of Guinea lies the country of Ghana, uh, which we mentioned while discussing the Prime Meridian. And it is through this country, Ghana, the capital of which is Accra, the zero degree longitudinal line passes. And also important because we will be doing the case study of cocoa cultivation in Ghana which is a major producer and exporter of cocoa from which we get our yummy and tasty chocolates. So this area will be of great importance to you. Let us come back to our text and in the text also we will mark the 8 most important water bodies which we have marked in the map right now. Coming back, number 1 is your Indian Ocean, number 2 Atlantic Ocean, number three, the Mediterranean Sea, fourth is your Strait of Gibraltar, fifth is your Swiss Canal, sixth, the Red Sea, seventh, the Southern Ocean, and eighth, the last one that we marked was Gulf of Guinea. Now we will be marking the three most important rivers of Africa. Number one is your River Nile. The river Nile is the world's longest river and it flows northward. You can see I have marked the arrows 
moving towards north. Now you can see where it is moving into. When we say that the river flows northward from the east central Africa. This is your east and this is your center because the equator is passing through it. You'll understand each word. Now we'll go back. The river Nile, it is flowing northward from the east central Africa to the Mediterranean Sea. And here it is very interesting to know that even though it is flowing through a entire desert for the maximum length of it, it is flowing through the Sahara Desert which is in the North Africa. Still it has water throughout the year because it has a permanent source of water that is Lake Victoria. So the next thing along with the river Nile we can mark is the Lake Victoria. Children, when you look into your maps, you will find that there are two tributaries also marked along with the Nile. That is the White Nile here and the Blue Nile. But here in this map, we are only marking the main course of the river Nile. Nothing else. We are not marking any tributary, only the main course of the river Nile. Moving ahead, the next river that we are going to mark is the river Niger. Now, Niger is the third longest river in Africa. It has its source in the highlands on the west coast, as you can see here. And it does not have much of water because it rises and flows through the dry areas. As I already told you that this entire North Africa has the Sahara Desert, which we will mark, but in the next map, when we are marking the plateaus and the highlands. Now, this river empties itself into the Atlantic Ocean. You can see here, there's a delta made out here. So, it means it is rising in the West Highlands and it is moving into the Atlantic Ocean. Children here again while marking the river Niger if you find the tributaries marked in your map kindly do not get confused we are not marking the Beni or the Sengil none of the tributaries of Niger we are marking we are only marking the main course of river Niger. In fact you should only know where the river Niger is just the location tracing has to be done because I cannot supply you the sample map therefore you are tracing it otherwise only the location or the position of the uh, rivers and the lakes is what is needed to be remembered now you all must be thinking ma'am has made you mark the longest river that is the nile then she's telling you about the third longest river that is the niger so which one is the second largest or oh, sorry second longest so, second longest is your Congo River, but that we will mark in the next class after we have filled our map with so much of information. We are still left with two water bodies to discuss. That is this Lake Chad. It is an important lake, so please mark it. You can see it's a beautiful shape. If you just rotate it in an angle, you will just find it as if it's a heart-shaped lake. And it's an inland uh, drainage lake, so it's very important for this specifically the Sahara Desert area of Africa. After this, we'll be marking the River Orange. Now, it has a significant importance in the Southern Africa. Now, this river rises in the Drakensberg Mountain. I have made the mountains for you. And it ends into the South Atlantic Ocean. Here we have this area. As you can see, I've made the arrow also. The last water body that we are marking is the Mozambique Channel. Now we first need to understand the meaning of the word channel. It is a length of water which is wider than a strait. And we have already discussed strait which is a narrow strip of water. Now here, channel is wider than the strait and it is joining two large water bodies or two large areas of water. 
and here you can see the two large water bodies which it is joining the Mozambique channel is the southern ocean and the Indian ocean it is in between but what it is separating I uh, sorry the Madagascar island is separated from Africa because of this water body or the channel flowing in between let us revert back to our text we had already marked eight water bodies so number nine was your river Nile 10 was Niger 11th was your river Orange 12th is your Lake Victoria 13th Lake Chad and the last is the Mozambique Channel children if for some reason you are still not able to mark the water bodies uh, you can simply download the map the same map which I have drawn out here I will leave an image of that in the PPT you can download that because the only thing you need to learn is where which water body is located that is all you have to learn you don't have to learn the entire course of the river or the shape of the lake you only need to know in which area of Africa or the surrounding water bodies which water body is located in which area that's all you need to learn 